Hello, my name is Chen Chen Zhang, and I joined the Genesis project in 2018 as a postdoc researcher. Currently, I'm a lecturer in politics and international relations at Queen's University Belfast. My latest research has been focused on issues of citizenship and migration, governmentality, and popular geopolitics on social media in contemporary China. During my time with the Genesis project, I co-organized with my fellow postdocs, Dr. Nolan Salmon and Dr. Takeshi Morisato, the Genesis Conference Transformation of Youth Identities in East and Southeast Asia, which took place in Brussels in May 2019. This two-day conference brought together scholars from across the world to explore the transformation and negotiation of youth identities in physical or virtual public spaces. The conference itself also provided a space for making transnational and transdisciplinary connections. One of the connections I made at the conference was with a fellow researcher based in Hong Kong, Dr. Ting Guo. A year later, Ting and I, along with two other researchers based in the UK and the US, started a Mandarin Chinese podcast called Shicha in Betweenness. In this video, I want to talk a little about this podcast and the conversations we've had, which reflect our engagement as Yuan-ish scholars in the Sinophone world with a virtual public space for building transnational solidarity and thinking beyond exclusionary identities in polarized times. Our first episode was on race and racism in the Chinese context, which went live in June 2020 and is so far still the most listened to episode on this show. The episode was inspired by the global debates on racism and racial injustice um, at the time and motivated by frustration with the fact that these issues were rarely discussed in the Chinese context in public discourse. The episode turned out to be quite popular and our podcast was also featured in an article in the US media outlet Political, which was about how a new wave of Mandarin Chinese um, podcasts are building a community of like-minded progressives among young Chinese people and challenging state-controlled narratives. Following this initial success, we have produced a series of conversations on feminism and gender, rural to urban migration, the public dimension of knowledge, digital China, and queer theory and transgender politics, everyday Sino-African relations, and Sinophone studies. So far, our guests have been Chinese-speaking early career scholars based in mainland China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Europe, and North America. A common thread in all our conversations have been transnational solidarity and global interconnectedness beyond binary thinking and geopolitical computations that serve the interests of the great powers. In the context of rising nationalism and right-wing populism across the world, and when great power competitions dominate much of the discussions on Chinese politics and international relations, we hoped to explore possibilities for thinking beyond dichotomous frameworks and instead from the perspective of hybrid identities and diverse experiences of oppression, precariousness, and marginalization. Because of the hegemonic status of the English language in scientific publications, many of the hosts and guests publish their academic work mainly in English. The podcast also offers us an opportunity to participate in the Chinese language public discourse from all corners of the world. The nine episodes we have produced so far have reached over 200,000 downloads, and we now have over 10,000 subscribers on the podcasting platform Xiao Yu Zhou. One of the most rewarding things about this initiative is all the listeners' feedback we have received. Among them are students who found the research and career path of the young female scholars we have invited inspiring especially in a context where the role of public intellectuals has been dominated by established male professors. And there were Asian Americans who told us how through the show they were able to 
rethink their relationship with different languages. In this listener's words, Shi Cha gets me in my heart. They understand how much I struggle with living in my Sinophone world, and they want to talk about it and process it with me. There's an intimacy to that, a being known in what they call the in-betweenness. Recently, after the episode on everyday Sino-African relations, a listener who was a volunteer in Guangzhou, who worked to help African residents in the city during the coronavirus crisis last year, when many African residents were evicted and treated unfairly by local authorities, shared with us the difficulties they had when translating local regulations and communications into English and French. The translation team constantly reflected on how to use more inclusive and respectful language rather than patronizing ones. We feel extremely grateful for these messages and for being part of these global conversations. So, to conclude, I see the Shicha podcast as a way of engaging and practicing the rationale of the Genesis project, which is above all centered on how youth presence in public spaces. Influences the negotiation of values, beliefs, and collective identities. Hi, thank you so much again for having me in Brussels. So since the conference, I've been continuing working on the issue of public space and youth through the perspectives of religion and gender, and I'm looking at in particular how young people are defying the pattern of parental governance. Under the framework of Confucian hegemony in modern China and Hong Kong, I'm very excited to see how、uh, through this、uh, new form of activism, how young people are creating new public space with new、uh, narratives, new expressions, and new sense of belonging and identity. And I've also been working on a、uh, Mandarin podcast with Chen Chen as well. So I think digital platforms and uh, podcasts uh, in particular are also part of this new、uh, dimension、uh, of public space,、uh, where young people are able to express themselves, express their ideas, and express their new sense of identity and belonging.